Today we're doing episodes 9 and 10 of Avatar The Last Airbender. In the last few episodes, the tone has changed dramatically. Aang is kind of struggling with what he has to do and how he can possibly do it. Let's see what happens. Four, Four nations lived together in harmony. Then, then everything, everything changed, changed when the Fire Nation attacked. I haven't even started waterbending and we're still weeks away from the North Pole. Calm down. He's freaking out. If you want, I can try and teach you some of the stuff I know. This is a pretty basic move, but it still took me months to perfect. So don't be frustrated if you don't get it right away. It's gonna be a natural. If you keep practicing, I'm sure eventually. Hey, I'm bending it already. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I can't believe you got that so quickly. Yeah. It took me two months to learn that move. Well, he's well, the avatar. you had to figure it out all on your own. I'm lucky enough to have a great teacher. Thanks. Smooth. I guess he's killing it with the ladies. It is super frustrating when you work on something really hard and then someone comes along and they're like, oh, this is easy. And they just seem to master it Im immediately. Part of it has to do with maybe in that moment, you're enjoying the idea of being a teacher or having someone look up to you for something. If they can do it instantly, it's like, well, what, what value am I? I got nothing to offer. I kind of know this one other move, but it's pretty hard. I haven't even totally figured it out yet. Well, the idea worried. is to create a big, powerful wave. It's not fair. Uh oh. That's enough practicing for today. I think one of the reasons why this touches a nerve is because this relates to actually a broader theme and a bigger problem that I have with shows like this about the role of luck. I think most people have had the experience where there's something you really want to become good at and so you start working at it and it seems like it just takes you way longer than it should. And you see other people around you who are just doing it so well and it looks like they're doing it effortlessly and they blow past you. Or even worse, they were lucky enough to find the thing before you. So not only are they more naturally talented than you at that thing, but they found it way, way earlier. So there's no way you're ever going to be able to catch up. For this show and others like it, a common problem I have with this kind of thing is like, Aang is the chosen one. They don't use the word chosen one yet, but essentially that's what he is. And there's a little bit of like unfairness in that. What about Katara, right? Why is she not the chosen one? Why is she not the lead? Why not Sokka? Sokka doesn't even have water bending powers. It's really difficult to kind of accept that you maybe weren't given the hand that you would have wanted to be given. It's a very, very bitter pill to swallow. Like, I'm not that. I wasn't made to be the center of the universe. I don't have the skills necessary to be the center of the universe. There's nothing preordaining me as anything special. I just am this random person born in the world. It's really hard to look at that honestly. And I think that is the cause of a lot of grief. You know, it's very easy to compare yourself to others and what they have and what they were born with. The only healthy way to reconcile that is kind of just to give up on that way of thinking and not compare people. There's a quote I like, which is, don't compare yourself to others today, compare yourself to who you were yesterday. So measure your success by your own growth or how much you're progressing as a person. It's kind of hard to be someone's friend and really be supportive for someone if you have that tension or if you have that feeling like you're the one who could be doing it, but just for some reason they are. It's tough, but you have to kind of let it go in order to progress as a healthy human being. And I think that's especially important too, because when you're wrapped up in someone else's success, you're trying to do their success, which is not going to work because you don't have the same gifts. You probably could find your own success in a more authentic way that would work better for you. And you could probably do it in a way that other people couldn't do. And you have to kind of be open to the fact that you are who you are in order to explore that. That's way farther than this is going right now probably, but that's just what I'm thinking about and what I have been thinking about while thinking about this whole like chosen one hero's journey thing. I'm gonna get some water because that made me thirsty. What? What kind of challenge is that? I can see from your clothing that you're world traveling tight. AKA poor. <laughs> It's a water bending scroll. I know how to deal with these guys, Katara. Pirates love to haggle. <laughs> uh oh. Watch and learn. One cover piece. So when I first went to Korea, there's an area called Dongdaemun. They have these huge malls with these independent vendors you can you can haggle with. And so I went there shopping and the first time I went there, I got so ripped off. Like I got super ripped off. And when I agreed to buy it, I actually like heard them laughing in the back. I guess they didn't know that I spoke a little Korean at that point. I actually heard them making fun of me. I bought the clothes still just out of like momentum and, and embarrassment. That triggered something in me and I ended up going to Dongdaemun so often like just to kind of like make up for that. And I by the end of it, I was a master haggler. I was getting things for nothing. It was a really good feeling. But yeah, haggling is an art form. It's tough. That just like reminded me of that. They're pretty bad at keeping a low profile. Getting caught. Is that a woman with a mustache? Nice. Oh, I didn't even didn't even occur to me they could turn water into ice. I guess that is water, right? So oh, nice little replay there. That was messed up. Oh, 
Oh, there are cabbages? Omashu. That's the place we got burned down. <laughs> they really did that town dirty. <laughs> Just like broke cabbages and then kicked people in the head. I used to kind of look up to pirates, but those guys are terrible. I know. <laughs> That's why I took Low key, very this. funny line. No way. Isn't it oh. great? Oh. You stole their water bending scroll. I prefer to think of it as high risk trading. Wow. Interesting little character thing there, I guess, for Katara. <laughs> once I figure out the water wind. So going back to what I was talking about earlier, it means a lot to her to be a waterbender. Like, she's identified with it. So to see Aang master it is, is frustrating, because he's like a better Katara than Katara, which is hard. Will you please shut your air hole? Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, your infinite wisdom gets a little old sometimes. Mm. Why don't we just throw the scroll away since you're so naturally gifted? Didn't expect it to play out <laughs> as directly as, as I was saying, but there it is. I don't want to have anything to do with it anymore. Mm. So that's the wrong answer, though. The answer is not to not do it. The answer is just do it in your own way. And, you know, not compare yourself to others, not be bitter about it. You just do your own thing. Find a way to make it meaningful to yourself. That's very real. I appreciate they're not afraid to make their characters flawed. It's good. Because they're flawed, they're also not flawed. Do you know what I mean? Shoot! Come on, water! Work with me here! You also can't do anything creative or, or skillful when you're all worked up. It's tough. You gotta be like in a nice state. Well, this actually goes back to something in Midnight Gospel where they were talking about how some people work better under pain. I feel the opposite. I The better I feel, the better I can do things. Because when I'm not anxious about anything, it gives my mind space to kind of be creative. Things just appear that are fun and nice and good. She needs to let go. <gasps> no! Let go of me! Yeah, she's gonna let go. Oh, that was good. See, she let go. Pirates. Ah! See, in his own way, Sokka knows who he is. He's just the guy with a stick. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna like hit these people with the stick. And he goes and does it. Sometimes. Oh what? I'm not good enough to kidnap. Yeah, speaking yeah. of which. Yeah, it kind of This is. is the first time Uncle Eero is Give me the boy. Meeting them. You give right? us the scroll. You're really gonna hand over the Avatar for a stupid piece of parchment? Your friend is the Avatar. Sokka the tactician again. You'll regret breaking a deal with me. Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! The last couple episodes have been really good about taking multiple actors, multiple sides, and kind of bringing them all together with conflicting interests. It's fun. We need a team of rhinos to budge this shit. Or wind. A team of rhinos. Or two waterbenders. Oh. That was awesome. Can we appreciate that shot again? That was, that's great. Find your role. Your Damn, we've got we even got an aer aerial battle. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. That's <laughs> good. That voice acting. Where's uh? There he is. Knew a bison whistle would come mm. in handy. Cool. I got so competitive that I put us all in danger. The scroll. What did you learn? Stealing is wrong, unless it's from pirates. <laughs> Good one, Katara. Got a little edge. All right. Nice. That was a great episode. On to episode 10? I love that episode. That was really nice. Wait. Air. Air. Fuck. Why do boys always think someone has to be the leader? I bet you wouldn't be so bossy if you kissed a girl. I've kissed a girl. You just haven't <laughs> met her. <laughs> Down you go. I feel like this character is based on something that I know, but I can't place it. You know, it just occurred to me, it does seem a little bit unfair that everyone seems to be able to just conjure whatever element that they have, except for water. In the last episode, they needed to find water to do the, the water bending, but the firebenders just have fire from their breath or whatever, and there's wind and earth everywhere. There were only like 20 guys. I was going to say this earlier when they were arguing about leadership, but I didn't. But now it seems like that's going to be a thing. I think that one of the things that makes people leaders is not anything about their external characteristics, but how capable they are in what they're doing. Really, I think that's it. And I think that's how it should be. We're like naturally drawn to people who are good at things. And if you're better at something than me, or if you're like really, really good at something, I'm going to defer to you on that thing, or at least I should, unless I'm stubborn and have that kind of resistance or have that image of myself as being a master of that thing, like in the last episode with Katara and waterbending. The reason why Sokka's not the leader, and Aang probably is, is because Aang is good at it. Yes, it's partly because he has the name Avatar, but you know, it's also because 
he so far has been the one to do the stuff like he's gotten them out of everything basically so this guy just took out this whole like squadron or whatever so of course katara is gonna look up to him and see him as a man also just the fact that he has people following him just like is validation that he's a leader you guys have a hideout you want to see it yes we want to see it <laughs> uh-oh ang's looking like a little kid Rufio, Rufio. Fire Nation killed my parents. I was only eight years old. That day changed me forever. Everyone's lost something from the Fire Nation. I guess it is the Lost Boys, huh? Avatar, huh? Very nice. Thanks, Jet. So I might know a way that you and Andy can help me. A little bit too suave. A little bit too slick. Please, sir. I'm just a traveler. <laughs> Oh. But he's not hurting anyone. Have you forgotten that the Fire Nation killed your mother? But now if he says anything bad about them, no one's gonna believe him because he was bitter. Your boyfriend Jet's a thug. What? No, You're just not. jealous. You're jealous that he's a better warrior and a better leader. It's nice to see Sokka getting some some screen time. I can't let you warn Katara and Aang. Take him for a walk. Those weapons are legit walk. terrifying. Katara, you can do this. Katara, what baby. <laughs> Jet's gonna blow up the dam. What? <laughs> I can put that together real quick. Nice air shield. Nice. Oh. I'm guessing maybe he evacuated the village. There are really cabbages again. They didn't show any people, so... No, he evacuated people. them. But one man vouched for me. The old man you attacked. Mmm, cool. He urged them to trust me. Redemption. We got okay. everyone out in time. Yip, yip. <laughs> Huh, Sokka just got major leader points. I really enjoyed those two episodes. I'm like pretty into the show at this point. I like what they're doing. It's just a lot of fun. That'll do for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you back for episode 11 and 12. I hear 12 is a big one, so.